Hi everyone, it's Vicky here with a new art journal today. So I am going to work on my moleskin art journal and I'm going to start with an old and uh, favorite technique. So first of all, I'm going to stick down this uh, tissue paper. This tissue paper comes from a roll by Tim Holtz, but it's uh, an old product and uh, it is now discontinued. In any case, you can uh, recreate the same effect if you use a stamp, a text stamp, and go all over the background with your stamp and black ink, or you can use any a white blank tissue paper and just stamp there and then if you are happy with the outcome then you can stick it down on your pages. I made sure that my tissue paper is stuck down nicely and I'm using matte medium and once I cover both the pages and the matte medium is nice and dry then I'm going to use my scissors to cut out all the excess paper. For coloring my pages today, I am going to use distress paints, which uh, are actually fluid acrylic paints. So I want to prepare my pages by applying a little bit of gesso. I am using Faber-Castell gesso, which is very thin. As you can see, it doesn't um, cover up all the texture on my background. And this is exactly what I want. To color my background, I'm going to use these three different colors of uh, Distress Paints and I'm going to use the, the ones that I have that have the dabber on top. They do come with a flip top these days. These are old versions, but you can uh, always get extra dabber tops if you want to and you can exchange them. It all depends on what you want to do. Now, as you can see, I'm applying a little bit of uh, paint with my dabber and then blend everything together with my fingers. I don't apply too much paint. Notice how little paint I apply. So this makes it easy for me to blend everything and I can build up the color layer by layer. If you add too much paint in the beginning, you don't know how to blend everything together. So this is the first layer and I know that it looks awful, but I am going to make sure that this is dry so I have something on my page. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same technique again on top. This time I decided to use a darker green since the one that I first used didn't look uh, so bright. And then again I'm blending everything with my fingers. You can use your uh, baby wipes but make sure that if you use baby wipes they are not too wet. Otherwise, the only thing that uh, they do are moving uh, the paint up and down and sometimes they even wipe out the paint. One advantage that I have when I am blending everything with my finger is that I end up with a very smooth finish. And now I'm going to add a little bit of color with my brush just to add uh, more um, brightness in uh, certain areas. Now notice how I haven't lost the text from the tissue paper at the back. I sometimes get comments that uh, I don't make mistakes or that I am mess free when I am working. Well, uh, there you go. You see that I'm not a mess free at all. I do have accidents all the time. In any case, when things like that happen, you see I don't panic. I just pick up uh, the paint from there. And then instead of wasting all that uh, paint, I used my brush to color another background. So I have something started for a future project. To add more interest on the background, I'm going to use the white distress paint by Tim Holtz, which is called Picket Fence, and I'm going over this uh, stencil. The stencil is by Carabelle, and uh, I am just adding a little bit of texture on my background. I think this uh, stencil is just uh, beautiful. It gives a beautiful result and uh, really organic and random. So I am going to add uh, this in uh, different places around uh, both of my pages. And you see that I don't add too much paint. I just want to have uh, the texture there, but I want it to be very subtle. As always, you can find the full list of all the supplies that I'm using today down below in the description area, as well as on my blog. So now I'm going to do some splashes and these are going to bring everything together. I am going to use my distress paints again and I'm using the exact same colors that I used for my background. I am adding some water on my paint to make it even more fluid and with a thin brush I'm adding the splashes. You can see that the splashes are not very vibrant and blend nicely with the background just like I want to. I don't want my backgrounds to be very bright and steal the um, thunder from the focal points. So after doing that with the green I am going to repeat the same process with the pink and the yellow. 
Now that the splashes are ready and everything is dry, I'm going to use my black marker and go all around the edges to create a border. This is one of uh, my favorite borders that I keep doing again and again because I find that uh, they frame my projects beautifully. And my background is ready, I'm going to put that aside and show you the stamps that I'm going to use for my focal points. So I'm going to use those adorable guys as well as one of the hearts and one little pebble. Now both of those stamps are by Carabelle. Carabelle is a company from Europe, they are actually from France and uh, their products are also available in the USA through Simon Says Stamp and I'm going to make sure to link you down below in online shops both in Europe and in uh, the US. So all I'm doing now is using my distress paints with a brush and applying a little bit of color on this scrap uh, paper and uh, then I'm going to stamp uh, my images on top. I am doing that because if I first stamp and then color, I might go over the lines and I don't want to lose the details of those guys. So I have uh, colored uh, using uh, mainly colors from the rainbow order. Uh, of course you can use pattern paper to do so and just paper piece. I decided to create my own colors. Also notice that I am stamping some of uh, these images to eyes so that I have a nice uh, big company of those guys. And uh, also notice that I am uh, stamping everything with black archival ink and that's because I want to make sure that everything is permanent and nothing is not going to smudge or smear as I'm working and sticking them down on my project later on. I made sure that the ink was dry and then used my scissors to cut all those images. I took my time. I love cutting out so I don't uh, mind really and uh, here are all of them together. I decided where everyone is going to go and now uh, with my matte medium I'm going to stick them down. As I am sticking them down I'm going to make sure that I go over them with uh, my matte medium and that's because I am going to use a certain technique, the technique that I use most of the times with my big brass markers to add some shading. And now it's time for my favorite technique, the technique that I find that it always brings everything together on my pages. So all I am doing now is adding a little bit of shading with my big brush markers on all the elements that I have stuck down. Now I am able to do so and uh, smudge the ink with my finger just because I have used matte medium on all of those um, images. So I am just uh, using a darker marker than uh, the actual image and I am uh, smudging it with my finger. I'm going to do the same thing for all those little images. This ink dries permanent and uh, you can go back again and again and build up the shading as much as you want to. One question that I get all the time is why I have a washi tape at the end of my markers and that's just because I take my markers on my live workshops and uh, this is the only way I can tell them apart from uh, my students.
So now that I am happy with my shading, I'm going to give my balloons a string and a little bow. And then, uh, if you notice, uh, the eyes are not white. So now I have to add some white all around those eyes just to bring them uh, more to life. And I am doing so with my white gel pen. I am going all around the details of the balloon with my white pen and uh, then I'm going to use my white gel pen and do another technique that I really love and add some highlighting on all the images. And I'm going to use a quote about friendship today that says friends make the good times better and the hard times easier. So I think uh, this uh, quote matches perfectly that uh, cute company of uh, happy little guys there. And I'm going to stamp uh, letter by letter some only some of the words. So I want to stamp with bigger uh, alphabet letters the um, words that I want to emphasize. So I'm going with uh, bigger letters for the words friends, better and easier. And in between them I'm going to use my label maker to print out the phrases. The alphabet letters that I am using are by Tim Holtz and they give a distressed look. If you see they are not uh, bold and uh, that's how they are supposed to stamp. But uh, since I want to have uh, my phrase nice and bold I am going all over them with my big brass black marker and just fill in the gaps. Now I'm going to use my label maker, write the sentences, print it out. I thought that this font was quite small so I'm going to go a little bit bigger and I'm happy with how that looks. I'm also going to write down the second sentence and then I'm going to print that out. Now these are stickers so I'm going to peel off the packing and stick them in between the stamped words. I always like to mix things up just like I am doing here and uh, either mix up fonts or um, uh, sizes so that I can emphasize some words more than others. And now my quote is uh, ready there. I'm going to go over those uh, stickers with my matte medium just to make sure that this is not going to peel off uh, when the time passes. And another favorite technique, I always like to use my white gel pen and go all over the letters. I think that this uh, gives them uh, some uh, highlight and um, it helps them pop from the page. I'm also going to go around the stickers with my uh, black marker and uh, make some lines. And this is going to finish the page for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me thumbs up on my YouTube channel. Here are some close-up photos of my art journal layout today.